Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a vigil tonight in Port Lavaca for a father and son whose boat capsized in Magnolia Beach. The Supreme Court issues a ruling on Mifeprestone, also known as the abortion pill. Plus, a pioneer Tejano music legend, Johnny Canales, passes at the age of 77. Well, we've got a warm, quiet weekend coming up for us, but it's next week when things get very interesting in the tropics. We may have a tropical threat by then, and we'll be talking about that coming up in a moment. And the Dallas Mavericks face long odds if they want a shot at an NBA title. That's in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. Benedicto and Angel Jaramillo's bodies were found in Point Comfort after their shrimping vessel went missing near Magnolia Beach on June 1st. The Coast Guard, Hunter Hadley's Quest, and many volunteers searched for the father and son for days. On 4th, Calhoun County Sheriff's Office confirmed the two were found in Point Comfort by Texas Parks and Wildlife Game Wardens. The family paid their respects for the Benedicto and Angel with a funeral service earlier today. And to continue their tribute, the Hada Meals will host a candlelight vigil at Magnolia Beach in Port Lavaca tonight at 7. And today, Victoria County deputies arrested a 32-year-old man. Derek Lopez faces two charges, including sexual assault. He remains in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of a $100,000 bond. An Edna teenager was arrested Monday. Cade Rodas was charged with stalking. He was in the Jackson County Jail in lieu of $25,000 bond. Rodas bonded out. Last season, Rodas rushed for over 1,600 yards for the Edna Cowboys football team while scoring 20 touchdowns. He was a first-team all-district pick last season. DeWitt County deputies arrested a 41-year-old man Tuesday. Jason Coates is charged with deadly conduct, discharge of a firearm. He is in the DeWitt County Jail in lieu of a $50,000 bond. Goliad County officials are still working on charges connected to a cockfighting ring busted there a month ago. Authorities tell us the cockfighting organizers canceled their next events. That's because their roosters and equipment were taken by Goliad County authorities. Officials are now trying to get arrest warrants for the cockfighting coordinators. 63 people were arrested at the cockfighting event on May 11th. And now let's take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis. Well, thank you very much. We are looking uh, quiet as we get on into the weekend and uh, it's still going to be warm. But I tell you, there's big news in the weather world. The pattern is changing. The heat dome that was over us is going to be moving up here to the northeast. They're going to be looking at 100 degree temperatures. And that means when that happens, the tropical door opens up. We may have some strong tropical thunderstorms around here beginning on Monday. We'll be talking more about that coming up in just a few minutes. So stay tuned. Mac, thank you. A high school student disciplined over his natural hairstyle will file an appeal against a Houston area school district. In February, a Chambers County judge ruled in favor of Barber Hills ISD after Daryl George and his family claimed his suspension went against the Crown Act. George was sent to an alternative school due to this hairstyle. George said the suspension deprived him of his usual school experience. A unanimous decision from the Supreme Court, the abortion drug mifepristone will stay available for women to use under current FDA guidelines. This ca uh, uh, case came from Texas, actually, and Justice Brett Kavanaugh pointed to a lack of legal standing to bring this case. Vice President Kamala Harris after the Supreme Court's unanimous decision to keep the abortion drug mifepristone available. We are looking at the fact that two-thirds of women of reproductive age in America live in a state with a Trump abortion ban. This ruling is not going to change that. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer tampering expectations for those in favor of abortion rights. This decision was based not on the merits, but on a lack of standing. We are not yet out of the woods. This morning, the court rejecting a legal challenge to the FDA's regulation around the drug. In the court's opinion, Justice Brett Kavanaugh writes, the plaintiffs have failed to demonstrate that FDA's relaxed regulatory requirements would likely cause them to suffer an injury. Abortion opponents call the high court's decision deeply disappointing. During oral arguments, lawyers for Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine accused the FDA of unlawfully easing restrictions and failing to study the dangers of mifeprestone. The FDA says the drug has been used safely by millions of women for decades. 
with serious side effects exceedingly rare. In the short term, at least, any efforts to restrict access to mifepristone, I think, will be directed at the FDA and the executive branch because, you know, a different president could make a different set of directives. The FDA could change its decision about mifepristone. So, you know, I think this issue is far from definitively resolved, even though this case is over. An anti-abortion rights group outside the Supreme Court today. Obviously, we were disappointed, so the court ruled against the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine, but we weren't super surprised. Um, that was what we expected, and we're going to be back. And a spokeswoman for Danco, the maker of Mifepristone, says they are pleased with the high court's decision today, calling it an incredibly important case. Perry Russell, ABC News, at the Supreme Court. And here's your viewer poll. Do you agree with the Supreme Court's decision on the Mifepristone lawsuit, yes or no? Let's look at those numbers. 56% of our voters say yes, 44% say no. We thank you for voting. We want to hear your opinion. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part, and we'll have an update on 25 News Now at 10. The demolition of a building on the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School campus is set to begin Friday morning. The Parkland, Florida school building is the site of a historic mass shooting that claimed the lives of 17 people in February of 2018. The building has remained untouched since that shooting. Demolition is expected to take several weeks. The shooter is serving a life in prison sentence with no possibility of parole. The House voted Wednesday to uphold or rather to hold Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress. Garland refuses to turn over audio of President Biden's interview in his classified documents case. The contempt action is House Republicans latest and strongest rebuke of the Justice Department and of Garland's leadership. It is unlikely that the Justice Department, which Garland oversees, would prosecute him. U.S. Representative District 27 Michael Cloud put out a statement on Garland, quote, Attorney General Garland's refusal to comply with a lawful subpoena undermines the essential checks and balances that are fundamental to our Constitution, unquote. The stormy weather over the past few days did not only damage Houston area homes and trees. It also devastated the oyster industry in Galveston Bay. It doesn't really matter where the rain falls. Once the skies have cleared, all of that water winds up here, flowing into Galveston Bay, then on to the Gulf. But that much water all at once can be fatal. It's deadly to oysters. When you get that amount of fresh water, uh, you know, they're resilient creatures, but there's only so much they can take. Rez Halili is the vice president of Prestige Oysters. One of the largest oyster companies in the country. Which is based here in San Leon. It's where they shuck, sell, and ship oysters to the rest of the U.S. by the truckload. Out in the water are their oyster reefs. We had, you know, tremendous amounts of multi-generations of oysters here in Galveston Bay, and to go out there and see them all pretty much wiped out within a few weeks, it's, it's tough. The problem is that oysters can only survive in brackish water, the delicate mix of salt water and fresh that under normal conditions, Galveston Bay is able to provide. But the persistent rainstorms and flood water has thrown off that perfect balance to the point that the bivalves are dying and there's no way to help them. We have $5 million worth of inventory that we lost here in Galveston Bay. It's an expensive problem, which is why Galveston County Judge Mark Henry issued a disaster declaration for the local oyster industry at the start of this month. The county judge's office told us today the declaration will hopefully bring federal funding to the industry that suddenly found itself underwater. Raz says Galveston Bay's oyster industry is often overlooked, but for this crisis, the federal assistance is necessary. Not only for the oyster devotees, but also for the ecosystem as a whole. They provide life for other creatures, they filter water, they clean our bay systems, and then they're our first barrier to uh, coastal erosion. State health regulators closed Galveston Bay to oyster harvesting on May 8th. A pioneer of Tejano music has died at the age of 77. Johnny Canales' wife, Nora, posted on social media that the longtime TV host passed away. Canales has been a household name for more than four decades after the 1983 debut of the Johnny Canales Show. Broadcasting throughout Texas, California, Chicago, and northern Mexico, his television show featured established and upcoming musical entertainers and groups and musical acts and interviews. One of those upcoming talents was Selena. Canales gave her one of her first live performances. Canales said one of the best things he did was to give musicians a chance by inviting them on his show. 
Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Then you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. YouTube. Stay with us. A trooper hit during a traffic stop. Coming up on 25 News Now at 6, the drunk driver now facing charges. Also ahead, a pizza place in Dallas changes their name ahead of the NBA Finals. Stunning video of a Virginia State trooper hit by a suspected drunk driver during a traffic stop on the Capitol Beltway. It happened Tuesday. First, a warning. The violent impact of the crash might be difficult to watch. The trooper was standing by a stopped car. That is when the suspected drunk driver hit a tractor trailer, spun it into the trooper's patrol car, which led to the trooper being hit. Miraculously, she did not suffer any broken bones, but state police say she still has a long road to recovery. Tesla shareholders voted to restore CEO Elon Musk's record $44.9 billion pay package that was thrown out by a Delaware judge earlier this year. The package is likely to remain tied up in Delaware courts for months as Austin-based Tesla appeals the rejection. The compensation package was worth $51 billion when it was voided by a Delaware judge nearly five months ago. A pizza restaurant has temporarily changed its name to show support for the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, it used to be named Boston's Pizza, and now it's Dallas Pizza. Service taking care of you. Service is good so far. What a week to run a restaurant named Boston's Pizza in Dallas, Texas. Well, uh, <laughs> this is not the time or town to back anything Boston. You got any match fans over here? Of course. So this sports bar and restaurant just gave itself a new name. Corporate definitely came up with the plan immediately and we're just like, this is an easy sell. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> General Manager Jason Battle was quick to tape up the signs and spread the word. Boston's Pizza is well. When you come in, you're going to be greeted with welcome to Dallas Pizza. Everybody doing okay today here at Dallas Pizza today? Dallas Pizza now. So Dallas is an amazing sports town with very passionate fans. Director of Marketing Julie Schaffner clearly knows her customers and helped cook up the idea. We're proud of our brand, but we're even more proud of the Mavericks. The Boston brand isn't entirely erased from Dallas Pizza, though. Still, any less Boston? I noticed the sign changing it from Boston's Pizza, which is not good, to Dallas Pizza. Is good enough 
for customers. I loved it. I loved it. Got to have Dallas Pride. And the company made the same change at all three of its North Texas locations and rebranded its signature spicy Texan pie as the Spicy Maverick. Or should we say Spicy Maverick Pizza? Fans here, as you might imagine, don't really feel the need for the names to switch back. And hopefully it permanently sticks. But soon, basketball will be over. The series will be settled and business as usual will have to go on. The name will change back after the series. We will go back to Boston's Pizza, but for the time being, shh, it's, it's Dallas. Yes. Don't tell anybody that. World Blood Donor Day tomorrow brings awareness of the need for safe blood donations and to encourage the world to donate blood. Locally, donations have dropped by 25%. Anyone who donates blood on World Blood Donor Day or through the rest of the month will receive points. They can be redeemed at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Online Donor Store for e-gift cards. You see those? Or South Texas Blood and Tissue Merchandise at the Victoria Donor Center, 6106 North Navarro Street. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, temperature right now on the warm side, about 92. It feels like 104 because of the humidity. However, uh, the things uh, that we've been watching in the tropics are changing around, and we're going to be talking about that. 94 was our high, 92 is the average. We've been up to 103. Yes, I'm talking tropical rains right here in the crossroad beginning on Monday. We'll talk about that after this. Well, good afternoon, everybody. We had a few little showers that popped up this afternoon, less than what we had yesterday, and uh, so quite a bit of heat and humidity around the area. But we've got a big pattern change, folks. We've got to talk about it, and uh, I've been looking at it for a couple of days, but this is the day we're just going to have to just do it. What's happening is that the dome of high pressure, which brought us all the heat for the last couple of weeks, is going to be moving. It's going to be moving north. It's going to Chicago. And what that does is that it opens up the tropical door. Right now, we have that system that went through Florida. It's out in the Atlantic. It's still drifting to the north, east. Um, and the, you know, incredible rain that occurred in Florida, 10 to 15 inches, uh, 10 to 20 inches in two days. Um, now we start watching this moisture that's out here in Central America uh, drift this way. So what's happening? Well, remember, the air goes around the high, and as that thing moves to uh, the northeast, it opens up the tropical door, and we're going to start getting strong flow of what they call a fetch of tropical air rolling up into our area. Now, it's very close to land. I don't think that it's really going to be a named storm, but there's going to be, by Monday, an area of low pressure here, 40% chance of developing, which is going to push 
all that moisture up into our area. We're on the northern end, I will admit it, but I'm thinking that we'll get two inches of rain out of this. Down here near Tampico, Mexico, they're probably going to be looking at 10 to 15 inches of rain uh, with this system coming ashore. Like I said, it doesn't have a lot of time to organize, so it's not going to be a, a named storm. Nonetheless, we've got to watch it. Uh, on this map, you can see this is future track, and you can see the yellow spots that are going to be developing right about here, uh, right about there, and then that stuff moves ashore. You can see we're on the northern end of it, so we get something, and uh, it goes all the way down uh, into uh, northern Mexico. Now, if it goes down below Veracruz, we're still going to get something. If it goes above Tampico, well, then we, it's going to be very interesting around here. Uh, the, the valley, uh, Rio Grande Valley, is going to get significant rain out of this. We're going to be on the northern end, and we're going to get some rain. So I do believe that if you have plans for next week, whether you're driving south or you're building around here, we're going to be looking at a, a couple of days of significant rainfall around the area. So, like I said, for the short term, we're doing fine. Tomorrow, lots of sun, uh, getting up to about 92 in Port Lavaca. Uh, tomorrow in Cuero, we're looking pretty good. Less of a rain chance and more of a 95 degree chance. And then we got to look at the long term because this is important. So as we are quiet Friday and Saturday, high pressure moves away. This is late Friday, uh, late Sunday night, probably close to sundown. We start seeing a bunch of clouds roll in and possible showers on Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, I'm already putting down as an alert day because all of you will be affected by significant rainfall here. One, two inches, maybe three. And then uh, the models keep uh, the rain going all the way through Thursday. What does that mean? It means a big, wet, tropical system for the crossroads for next week. That's your seven day forecast, reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that, put crossroads a day on your phone. And here's Cuddy now. Thank you, Here's Zach Brown with your sports. If the Mavs are to win an NBA championship, they'll have to do something that's never been done before. I'll have that in sports. The Mavs dropped the first two games of the series in Boston and last night trying to protect home court. There was no poor Zingas last night for the Celtics and early on so far so good in the first quarter. But Boston would go on a run and at the end of one, the Mavs led 31 to 30 and they actually had the lead 51 to 50 at halftime. But Boston pulls out the win 106 to 99. The Mavs now in that dreaded 
3-0 hole where no team has ever come from before. Teams are 0 and 154 all time. So barring a miracle, this series is over. We'll see if the Mavs have any life left this Friday looking to at least avoid the sweep. It's awesome. I mean, I can't, I don't even really have words. It kind of doesn't even feel real right now. And I'm just trying to stay in the moment. Like, you know, it feels, it feels great to be up 3-0 in this series, but like the job's not done. Tom Brady has been inducted into the New England Patriots Hall of Fame. The sold out ceremony took place inside Gillette Stadium on Wednesday night. According to the team, the event featured a variety of speakers along with musical acts and even fireworks. Brady's family, friends and hundreds of his former teammates and coaches attended the ceremony. It's the first time a Patriots player has been honored with a ceremony inside the stadium. Normally, players receive their red jacket during a small ceremony. U.S. transgender swimmer Leah Thomas will not be competing in next month's Olympic Games in Paris. Thomas lost a legal challenge against rules that blocked her from competing in elite women's races. The 25-year-old argued that World Aquatics, the international governing body for water sports, has rules that are, quote, invalid and unlawful. But the Court of Arbitration for Sport found that Thomas had no standing to sue the transgender policy and was not eligible to challenge the rule as someone no longer a member of U.S. Swimming. Responding to the ruling, World Aquatics said it is, quote, dedicated to fostering an environment that promotes fairness, respect, and equal opportunities for athletes of all genders. What a game between the Rangers and Dodgers last night. Texas scored three runs, all three on one swing from Corey Seager to put the Rangers in front, three to one in the fifth. Now, same score in the bottom of the ninth with two runners on for the Dodgers. It was poked in the right center field. One run scores and the ball is bobbled. The runner from first tries to come home to tie the game. The throw just in time. The Rangers just do escape L.A. with a win in the series final score, 3-2. to two. That is it for your sports. Donna Karina, back to you. We're back in a moment. A new project in Virginia is honoring the lives of enslaved workers and allowing future generations to track their ancestors. If you missed Storm Prep 2024, here are some other dates and times you can catch the show. Right here on KAVU, Saturday, June 22nd at 1230 p.m. KMOL, Sunday, June 23rd at 1130 a.m. KVCT, Sunday, June 23rd at 1230 p.m. And KXTS, 
Saturday, June 22nd at 11 a.m. Finally tonight, these volunteers are part of a project at a park in Virginia. It was once a plantation, home to 80 enslaved men, women, and children. Old documents they found paint a chilling picture of how people were treated like property. The project aims to help people trace their ancestry as future generations learn the stories that echo within those walls. It's an appropriate project for right now because we're less than a week away from Juneteenth, next uh, Wednesday. Uh, and uh, of course, that happened at Galveston. That's right. Mm. Yeah, right here in the, Texas. The war, uh, Juneteenth, the, the, the Civil War was over, but they didn't know about it here because nobody had newspapers or radios until the general came and landed and said, it's over, you're free. So it's a big uh, moment. That document actually was in a museum in Dallas a mm -hmm. few years ago. The actual document. The statement. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What he read. Mm -hmm. Anyway, folks, uh, we've got a couple of quiet days, but I really, I, I, I don't want to freak you out. I don't want to scare you. That's not my job. My job is to give you as much uh, warning as I can. Uh, beginning on Monday, I'm looking at a big tropical surge of moisture, which is going to rain heavily. Uh, for, for our area. We're probably looking at two to four inches of rain. It's going to be even heavier down toward the valley and as the storm rolls into northern Mexico. Thank you, Mac. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tonight at 10.